Hello, everybody. Welcome to the ECU Podcast, an intern survival guide, where we teach you how to survive in Paris and during an internship at an indie festival. We have new hosts every week with different topics each time, ranging from music, fashion, tourism, but above all, independent cinema. We hope you like today's episode. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next edition of ECU's Intern Survival Guide. Warning, this podcast occasionally contains strong language, which may be unsuitable for children, unusual humor, which may be unsuitable for adults, and lots of LGBTQ plus jokes, which may be unsuitable for assholes. Welcome everyone to the last episode of the Intern Survival Guide podcast and ECU podcast. I'm here with Linus. Hi guys. And we're talking about the end of the world. Pretty much the end of the world in movies, the end of our podcast. Very nice thematic coherence that we have going here. Um, and I'm just going to start us off by talking about like recently what has become really popular again is the Fallout series because yeah. of the new series Amazon Prime has been doing that's available now and it has uh, led to renewed interest in end of the world themes and uh, ways to end the world pretty much. Yeah, the games have become popular all over again. Uh, I, I also saw like charts of the sales of the games skyrocketing again. Yeah, Everyone uh, is posting Fallout memes again, which yeah. I'm very happy because I'm old and I like them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it's it's interesting because it, it kind of goes through cycle. We all know that like the, the, the themes of like, oh, the end of the world, the apocalypse and so on. Right. are kind of recurring then people get tired of them yeah and there's kind of this feeling of oh every movie is an apocalyptic movie right. or is a post-apocalyptic movie and then there's like a five to ten year space where they do less of them and then there's another big blockbuster in the genre that kind of like kicks off another round of and i feel like yeah you're right we're in a phase where they're really popular again yeah Especially in light of like the recent events that we have, the um, the wars going on in Ukraine and the Middle East, obviously, it feels like there's this atmosphere in the air that the world is kind of spiraling out of control. Maybe similar to how it did in the in the Cold War, actually. Yeah, definitely. It, it both kind of feels like a new Cold War period with all these big powers, kind of doing proxy wars in other countries yeah. but also there are also the big themes of technology which are mm -hmm. often connected with the apocalypse because like we're there's of the whole discussion about ai and it like taking over uh, there's so many articles about oh ai is taking over or uh, it's gonna be the end oh we don't need to be worried about this or this country but we need to be worried about ai right. through substituting humans right. or uh, so yeah there's Kind of a new dimension to discussing apocalypse, but it's a new old dimension because so it's, it's always been about exactly either conflicts or technology. Yeah, and people have always philosophized about how the world might end and how um, how 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 society, how the how like the whole um, belief system um, gravitated towards like a, a vision of how it might end. And Christianity, obviously, with revelations. Um, in uh, or in uh, old Mayan uh, um, tradition with the apocalypse calendar, which was supposed to like um, prophesize the end of the world in mm. 2012, which obviously didn't happen. We got the movie though, 2020. You know, <laughs> I don't know if anybody has seen that, but very big disaster Roland Emmerich movie. Um, so yeah, people have always been kind of fascinated by this idea, like how. How's it all gonna end? Like, yeah, and we're about in in a like ten year cycle. Yeah. Because twenty twelve was like twelve years ago. Yeah. And that kick started a bunch of disaster movies. Right. And and then there was a few and then there was like kind of the, the zombie trend came back. Yeah. Uh, with things like World War Z and um, mm -hmm. and uh the new kind of like of the dead movies. Yeah. Uh, uh, and kind of the, the weird Resident Evil franchise never stopped. No, I, no. I don't know how they can continue making films, but they are not stopping. They've been going for uh, time. The, the whole Paul W.S. Anderson mm. uh, films. Uh, and then it went back into a lull, like in the like 2015 onwards, because it was the whole like elevated horror rebirth. Mm. And now we're kind of back to it. Yeah. 
to the, the, the apocalypse things mm. through robots, through natural disasters. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of different ways to end the world, actually. Oh, yeah. The, like, <laughs> do you have a favorite uh, apocalypse movie that's ending the world in a very uh, interesting way, in your opinion? Um, I don't know. I, I do have a weird passion for like uh, apocalyptic natural events movies mm -hmm. like there is a really trashy part of me that loves stuff like um the day after tomorrow the mm -hmm. freezing over right. uh, or or uh, even like the, the dumb tsunami or earthquake movies i like san andreas the stupid mm -hmm. Wayne the rock johnson movie <laughs> is a guilty pleasure of mine although i do realize how bad that is mm -hmm. um I don't know though. I, I feel like now it's more interesting to talk about kind of like the collapse of society because of like AI and yeah. technology. It's a bit more nuanced. I, I feel like we already did the disaster yeah. movie phase. Yeah. And um, so we can just explore something new. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that are uh, a bunch of different movies that use uh, human made ways to end. The world pretty much like for example terminator is a pretty big one that uh, most of you will know um then movies that uh are like uh where diseases get out of control like you talked about the, uh, the, the zombie movies like 28 days later oh yeah that's also, a great one the series like the walking dead or um any other like human-made catastrophe that pretty mm -hmm. much ends the world or like puts humans in a position where they have to like avert the coming end of the world like for example there's this really trashy um armageddon by uh michael bay oh i love it the 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 the, as the asteroid coming towards earth and they sent a bunch of drillers up there yeah blowing up it's instead so... of training us uh, astronauts how to use a drill <laughs> this is probably one of the few movies we will agree on <laughs> that it's wonderfully trashy it's really it's really uh just uh, plays the stupid premise so uh, unapologetically straight that you and such them. a cast yeah yeah as well. like wonderful cast uh, of like kind of like I don't know not well Bruce Willis was a big star when yeah, that came out exactly uh, and Liv Tyler was kind of emerging as a big star because yeah. it was like it was the same years of like the Lord of Rings yeah, yeah so she was kind of oh she's Arwen but she's also now in this like weird <laughs> apocalyptic movie yeah, yeah but yeah. the rest of the cast is wonderful it looks like an yeah. A team but <laughs> Ben Affleck's but Alex in it, uh, James Franco, I feel, is in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve Buscemi is definitely Buscemi. in it. Yeah. He's wonderful in that. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great. I haven't seen that in a long time. And yeah, we watch it. It's a great <laughs> guilty pleasure movie. The one I really like though, where it's like implied, oh, it's uh, been a man-made disaster, is the Mad Max franchise. Yeah. Also, with Furiosa coming out soon or having come out now, um, it's I'm really excited for that because yeah. I I love this. Um, this kind of world that George Miller created with this film where it's like a, such a car-centric like um, based society where they worship their uh, their cars now where ga gasoline is like the most precious yeah. resource on the planet pretty much and I just like the whole um, the theme especially of Fury Road which is one of my favorite action movies yeah. as well Wonderful. I got to see it in the cinema just the theme of Oh, there is nowhere to go. There is no hope, but we have to like keep going yeah. anyway to find some sort of salvation or redemption in this wasteland that's just oppressingly bleak sometimes. Yeah. And it's just I yeah. feel also like one of the very good things about Mad Max and actually many other like franchise. I uh, also like um, Planet of the Apes. I don't know it, but yeah. I know why people love it. I think post-apocalyptic franchises or films normally f fare better than apocalypse films because apocalypse films are kind of predictable well we have your cast of heroes protagonists anti anti heroes or whatever that need to survive an apocalyptic level event and they may or may not manage to a bunch will die in the process to like tug on the emotional strings but your hero is going to survive in a world that's doomed yeah post apocalypses are much better the chances for social commentary for yeah. like interesting stories the, the mad max franchise is fantastic on that yeah because you can do this all social commentary on capitalism consumerism and everything yeah but 
from a world that's been destroyed by it. Yeah. And so it's kind of, oh, let's see how values would change or would stay the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a world that has changed so much. Yeah, right. it's like a catalyst for yeah. the action. It provides the action. It's rather than like the, the end goal of the movie. It's yeah. like a starting point and it kind of gives you this world to play with to explore these themes of repeating cycles of violence, of yeah. um, human greed, of human human failure pretty much. That's always like bleak apocalypse movies I feel like are sometimes like the best, most powerful ones because they'll just illustrate these sides of human nature. Although it would be interesting to see like either a comedy or a bit of like this like very moody atmospheric films yeah. uh, of a happy post-apocalyptic scenario. Yeah, like where, like, uh, where oh, the apocalypse actually made things better. <laughs> <laughs> like the comedies I can think of, like Zombieland, for example. The Zombieland is kind of like on that, on that. The, yeah, with, that way. with Jesse Eisenberg's character narrating, oh, this has changed for the better. Like, yeah, people, exactly. People who don't do cardio get killed and stuff like that. <laughs> the rules of zombie land. But otherwise, I try to think of another post-apocalyptic movie. I don't know if you've seen Oh Idiocracy. I haven't known. Uh, no, it's like a it's like a satire on American consumerism as well. Sure. But I can't actually apocalypse-wise, I can't think of one. It's yeah, like, where it's like. Oh, the apocalypse is actually uh, like it's is played as a thing that's, that's also. Cool. I'm still waiting for someone to pick up the Metro franchise and oh, do movies yeah. about that because I feel that's one of the best apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic franchise ever. Absolutely, the books are wonderful. The games are like arguably also really, really, really good. But specifically the movies, yeah. and there is so much good material about it. I feel like we are kind of do yeah. either a Metro series or a Metro movie. A series would be awesome. Um, a series would be really good. Because like when, if they did it the same way uh, they did it with the Fallout series, yeah. which I loved, it was so great. I've not seen it yet. I need to. You need to see it. They build. Yeah. They really, if they build on the games rather than just adapting the storyline from yeah. the games. Um, then uh, I would be really on board with that because the Metro games are like, I think my favorite post-apocalyptic games as well. Because Metro Exodus is also um, has such a powerful human story. The characters are very, because it's also, again, a very bleak future. Yeah, I like the, the other two better. I, the, I like like 33 and Last Light much more okay. than Exodus, but that's from like, a game design standpoint. No? Okay. Like the, the world building the, of the whole series is wonderful and the books by Dimitri okay. Glukowski are fantastic. Oh, so you have played all of them as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've played all, all the games, read all the books, also spent a lot of my like early 20s reading the metro kind of fun novels because Glukowski himself encouraged people to write short stories about how is it going in other parts of the world in the metro franchise and kind of build a platform for that oh. uh, i don't remember the name of the platform but there is so much like well-written stuff uh, about that universe that's really well it's not canon uh, yeah. but what is canon when you're just talking about this kind of things yeah. it's, just, it's just fun yeah that's really cool what because like there's so many stories to tell in this kind of world yeah. as well also because i think this is a very good point uh to move on to like the the nuclear kind yeah. of fear that's still existing right now because that in the metro franchise there's also been this nuclear war that has yeah. brought this kind of never-ending winter especially in moscow where the surface is irradiated yeah. things have mutated and um it's just like it seems to be a very common theme yeah once again it used to be in the cold war it was used to yeah. more for sci-fi movies than like yeah. horror stuff yeah uh but like if one listened to like romero's interviews yeah zombies are about like nuclear threat yeah, like that's that's just a way to describe like the fall of society, but they're all uh, a metaphor. Especially the the first, like Night of the Living Dead, yeah, was heavily inspired by like the nuclear threat, yeah. threat and so on. But the the Dawn of the Dead is more like about Vietnam, yeah, and and so on. But um, and it, 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 in consumerism, of course. Yeah. But like, it, it's weird to think that the biggest trend in apocalyptic movies connected to the nuclear disaster yeah. is actually zombies. Yeah. Although often you don't see a nuclear disaster in zombie movies. Yeah. At all. 
Uh, but I do think it's more interesting to approach it in the way like Metro does. Yeah. Like, oh, people are stuck underground. The surface, which is what we're used to, is no longer available access or followed. Yeah. Like both followed and Metro build really good post-nuclear apocalypse. Yes. Yeah. Followed kind of did it with this more um, retro approach, like uh, the world yeah, is stuck in the 60s. The 50s, 60s. Whereas Metro just kind of did it with a more modern approach a bit, Mike. The Metro world well, got stuck in this situation. In the 90s, 90s. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, the 90s, pretty much. So um, it's kind of different aesthetics going on in it as well, which is cool because it separates them. Yeah. You can, you can enjoy both in different ways. As well. Yeah, exactly. Because the 60s also had a lot of different uh, issues going on than the 90s. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, related to um, uh, racial issues, related to like the consumerist issues, the rise of corporations, yeah. which is all explored in the Fallout series. It's just, so well. It's yeah. kind of this, the like thematic strength of the Fallout series, yeah. just doing this. Because it's a bit cheesy to say it feels really actual and 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 and, yeah. and contemporary yeah. but it, it really does also because it's written now yeah it's set in the 50s and 60s but it's flows themes that are like um, yeah. relevant now yeah yeah no it's also like we saw how popular oppenheimer got as well like of course. The, um which um, is a movie not explicitly about like nuclear Armageddon but implicitly it very much is I do I do agree there is a lot of talk about like changing or ending the world yeah in Oppenheimer it's yes. it, it, and and how like both feasible it is to end the world and also how we were kind we were and may be right now kind of ready to do it yeah like like the the, the moral of Oppenheimer is oh we may trigger this chain reaction that ignite the atmosphere yeah but then okay yeah we'll drop we drop the bomb anyway and hope the calculation were wrong and yeah it's if if it destroys the world well there is a chance there is a chance uh, and it's always oh, like, a chance left. exactly yeah and but it's interesting the, to see the fact that they they were and we kind of are okay with it yeah. with taking the chance and that's kind of what it feels like for ai as well yeah because there is this that old discourse about if an ai if a uh, machine learning ai gains sentience yeah there is a point of no return right you can no longer stop it but we're still developing them yeah so we may ignite the atmosphere in another way. In another way, yeah. Like it's, but like all in our like search to make our lives easier as well. That's, yeah, you know, it's like the, uh, that because that's always been like the drive of technological progress as well to alleviate mm -hmm. human labor, or also curiosity, like the thirst for information that we have since we are constantly learning and stuff. Yeah. So, um, I think we might be. Um, Go keep we're definitely gonna keep going down this path oh yeah definitely like there there is this whole thing that every time uh, and that's discussed also in Oppenheimer yeah as soon as something is discovered it will be used uh, in the most extreme of its possible declination yeah oh they discovered the the the, the, the splitting of the atom nucleus and so kind of nuclear power yeah they will make a bomb out of it. Yeah. They discover, they develop the quantum computers that can develop something that resembles sentience. Yeah. They will get there eventually. Yeah. Um, because they can they get them to pilot drones to target. Yeah. To target, for example, um, opposing factions. Yeah, so, or or just train them to be the best stockbrokers ever. Yeah, and profit a bunch from manipulating the market with superhuman, li literally superhuman, yeah, uh, calculating computers. Yeah, uh, and it's it, it's interesting times to be alive. Then <laughs> uh, media is gonna. Uh, I'm I'm very excited where the media is uh, going with mm -hmm. also because there's gonna be there's been talk about AI in movie or use in movies as well and how it's or, gonna change yeah. that. The media landscape in cinema I mean, we might be seeing like an um apocalypse for like creativity in cinema as well but yeah if more and more studios decide oh we don't need real creative minds we can just give it to a computer and they gonna come yeah out. Well, actually both sides of cinema both the the screenwriting because mm -hmm. there's all the chat gpt stuff but also like okay having like um 
movies written by AIs, but also the technical stuff. Yeah. Oh, we don't need special effect artists anymore because we can just AI the backgrounds, AI the special effects, AI this and that. Yeah. Uh, we not, don't need cameramen anymore because we yeah. have so good cameras AI that they kind of keep the focus, track the shots, and so yeah, it's it's scary times to be working in cinema right now. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll see. All of us. We'll see where it will go though. I think we, like my generation in particular has like this kind of nihilistic out view on the world anyway. Yeah. Like where it's like um, we uh, just realize everything since we were brought up kind of with and without the internet. We realize all. Oh, there's still something like aside from technology, but it will be pushed aside. So kind yeah. of this will, this kind of gives me personally like a very nihilistic outlook on like, well, it's going to go, but like also like the thought of, oh, it's going to go there. No matter what. So exactly. Actually, so, we, can, we can do about it. And so we're just going to right. make, yeah, exactly, make the best out of it and create our own meaning yeah. in this world pretty much. And yeah, that's why movies are so, I think, important to like um, articulate this feeling. Do you have a favorite Apocalypse movie? Uh, yeah, I would I would say Mad Max. Fury Road. Fury Road. I would say that's up there, but I also know this movie that's... Um, people know Parasite by Bong Joon-ho, but people, mm -hmm. um, not most people know Snowpiercer. Oh, it's, so cool. it's such a good movie. It's such a good movie um, because it's like also about the human condition, mm -hmm. how we are, how we are do our class conflict is like doomed to repeat itself, like how we create the structures that enslave us as well. And it's such a good, like, it's such a high concept, but very well executed yeah. movie, like just a humanity on a train. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, but tell me about your favorite movie. like. What's your favorite post -op? So I do agree on like Mad Max Fury Road is probably the best post-apocalyptic action movie ever and possibly one of the best action movies ever yeah. period. Um, and I do like a lot of dystopian films that are also arguably post-apocalyptic because they are post-society. But the really apocalyptic movie I really like is 2007's The Mist. Oh, The Mist. Based on the Stephen King's novel, which is weird for me because I mostly don't like Stephen King and don't like movies mm -hmm. done on Stephen King's novels. Okay. But that's kind of an exception because how how bleak it is. Yeah. And Especially how, the ending. Yeah, they, they, they not, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, they yeah. kept it so real and so bleak. Uh, it's so, so good. But again, it's... It's similar to Snow Pearson in a sense because it's people stuck in a supermarket. Yeah. Basically. Uh, it's about the uh, breaking down of the kind of societal rules and everyone kind of develops their own uh, factions, they divide, they um, uh, react to the threat uh, and not just to the threat but to their understanding of the threat yeah gradually because they think oh it's gonna it's just a mist okay it's gonna go away oh there's something in the mist no uh oh now we know what that something is or kind of like what it looks like and th those are the stages where like they break more and more down but there's also space for like unity and kindness right but i like that it remains bleak yeah, uh, in 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 its whole like um, situation, really, really like it. I really, I really would want to watch it in a cinema. Never mm -hmm. saw it in a cinema, but it must be. And I know there are two versions. Mm, yeah, there is a black and white version. Really? Of it. I am. I've always seen it in color, but I feel like it would work so well in black and white. Mm -hmm. I really do want to see the black and white version of it. Okay. Because that's super super interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that's kind of my pick. I, I, I am also like big shout out to the Ma Matrix series. Oh, that's yeah. That's really stupid, Definitely. but that's a very good way to handle like ap apocalypse through technology. Yeah. And if you never watch them, do watch the Animatrix. The, oh, yes. The, the, they are I've seen so them. much better than the movies. I've seen them. <laughs> I they think are they really are incredible. Yeah. Uh, I have a very big soft spot for animation, but yeah. they are re they are some of the best Matrix-related content, like, yeah, right. ever, definitely. Yeah. But, so, yeah, that's kind of my... That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, nice of you to mention the Matrix series as well. I didn't actually think about them. But, yeah. So, I would say this is where we could end it. Yeah. It's the last episode of the intern survival guide 
and then um, people are just gonna have to stay tuned for the next edition coming around soon, right? Yeah, the, the, there's gonna be this is the apocalypse of the podcast. Yeah, and there's gonna be a post apocalypse. Yeah, ex- for the Echo Podcast. Exactly <laughs> right. That's why we're gonna go in the next episode of our brand new podcast. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for that and see you then. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.